Let's say I'm an orange producer and I have produced these six oranges. Now the government comes along and tells me that it wants to take away one of these oranges to pay for the legal system, the military and the police. The rest of my five oranges that I have left. I'm like, well, that sounds pretty reasonable. Let me give away one of my oranges to you. However, after a while the government comes back and says it needs one more orange. I ask why? And it says, well, it needs to pay for the infrastructure, the education, and the healthcare, things like that. This time, I'm a little more hesitant because if government takes away one more orange, I'm, I'm left with four more. And I've heard that the government spoils money a lot. It builds unnecessary flyovers and bridges and very recently approved a program where it would install escalators in schools. That That is ludicrous. But you know, I guess infrastructure is necessary and schooling and healthcare is also good and I want to live in a good society so I agree upon giving up one more orange. Now I'm left with four oranges and I think, God, please let me keep these four oranges. The government comes back and demands one more orange to pay for the bailout of the banks that have made risky loans and to pay for the government industries that have been incurring massive losses and covering up the deficit that the government has created by spending more than it earns. This time I get a little annoyed. See, if I give up one more orange, then I only would have three more left. That's exactly the half of what I had originally produced. I really don't want to do that. So I go to the government employee who is asking me for all these taxes and and I tell him, dude, is there any other way that we can work out between, you know, ourselves? And he's like, you know, there is. Why don't you give me one orange and put the rest of the five oranges in a Swiss bank where they only charge one orange as taxes. That way you would have four oranges left instead of three. And rest assured, nobody would ever find out about this. I will make sure of this. And that is how tax havens work. And now let's say I, the grower of oranges, figure out that if I shift my entire orange firm to Singapore, I would only have to pay one orange to the government as tax and I would save that one more orange that I had paid as a bribe. That is how capital flight and outsourcing works. Now to be fair, we, the developing countries, have benefited from the high taxes imposed in developed countries because it has caused the big brands to shift their production into the subcontinent. Companies like Ford Motors, Cisco and Microsoft are now outsourcing to this side of the world. On the other hand, clothing brands such as JCPenney, Gap and H&M are some of Bangladesh garment manufacturers biggest buyers. But that has been possible because of the extremely cheap labor that we can now provide in our country. But in the future, when the workers continue to struggle for higher wages and benefits, we might no longer have that market niche. In that case, the foreign companies that are now heavily investing in our economy might just shift their production from our country to elsewhere. And the scary part about that is, when that happens, we might not have a strong enough domestic economy to fall back to. In a report published by the World Bank on Ease of Doing Business, Bangladesh was ranked as 177th among the total of 190 countries. This means the environment for investment inside Bangladesh is not auspicious at all. Despite achieving remarkable growth in our GDP every year, there has been little domestic investment in the current years, which means that all our growth is basically hiked up by the foreign investment and we have not been able to retain much of it in the domestic economy which means that all the growth that we are seeing in our economy right now might just be caused by the steroid of foreign investment and as soon as that goes away 
we might find that there is no real muscle beneath it that can be used to turn Bangladesh into an economic superpower. One reason we don't have enough domestic investment is high tax rate. Other Asian economic tigers such as Hong Kong or Malaysia have far less rigid tax structures compared to the 17% standard corporate tax rate imposed by Singapore. Bangladesh charges a 25% corporate tax rate for listed and a sky-high 35% tax rate for non-listed entities. Which means that me, the non-listed orange producer, would have to give up more than one-third of my produce, which is, uh, when the smaller one, this much, and I would only have left this. See? Why would I want to do business in this country? I would just move to Singapore. Specifically because of these reasons, Bangladesh is now seeing a huge amount of capital flight from this country to countries like Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, or Switzerland. According to a report published by Global Financial Integrity, the unrecorded capital flow from Bangladesh stood at 61.63 billion between 2005 and 2014. 2016's report revealed that there had been a 19% increase in deposits since 2015. The deposit by Bangladeshi citizens to various Swiss banks totaled to 5,566 crore in 2016. This basically means that we are taking in money from one part of the world and giving it away to another part. All the growth that we are seeing right now is coming from the consumption that is happening in the process. And that growth based on consumption alone cannot sustain. Let's take a look at our oranges again. Remember how our government charges a little more than two oranges to a grower of six oranges? And how those growers avoid paying the two and a little more oranges by giving one orange to the government official and one orange to a foreign government or moving their orange farm to a foreign country overall? One way of stopping this would be not letting these individuals store their oranges in a foreign country or grow them in a foreign country. But that would require a full-scale revolution that is constantly vigilant to keep these individuals in check. And when these individuals are kept so much in check, they might just give up orange farming altogether. The other way is to stop charging them more than two oranges. Just charge them one, just like Singapore does. But that would mean that the government would earn only one orange instead of the original three. Now if you think that there is nothing wrong with that, you need to know how much our government spends. It doesn't only spend three oranges, it spends five oranges in its budget. And these two oranges come from foreign aid and foreign loans. This needs to be fixed before anything else can be fixed. How we can do that can be a topic of another video. Until then, I'm Onupam Devajishrai. And this was The Breakdown. I'm going to eat the oranges now.